Um, welcome, um, hello, my name's Daniel Agnew, I'm a teddy bear specialist and toy specialist and I'm here with Hilary Pauly who's hello. a teddy bear collector and today we're going to talk about um, gollywogs which is a subject that I love. Um, gets a bit of a poor bad rap these days by the PC Brigade but um, a golly was a gollywog was created by an American called Florence K. Upton and it was her childhood toy um, and uh, he became a character in a, a book that she wrote and illustrated um, about a gollywog and um, three wooden jointed dolls and he was very much the hero of the book and he used to save the day all the time and he was a much beloved character in the late 19th century. I think she wrote her first one in about 1894 and he looked very like this um, so uh, uh, she described him as a, a gnome-like character, um, very much like a garden gnome that you might have in your garden. So he's, um, you know, he's got a very large nose and he has this shock of hair and he's um, sort of quite big eyes. And they're often shown wearing this sort of outfit, which is a sort of red and blue and white outfit. And this is... I suppose you would call this the outfit of a minstrel um, that was travelling around entertaining people in America at the time in the 19th century. So he became very much a, a, a hero and um, he became a very popular children's character through the early part of the 20th century. So she wrote these books up until about the First World War and it was a range of 13 of them and uh, they always, as I said, they quite soon after the books came out, they um, produced toys of them and they were often sort of homemade really, uh, or cottage industry I would call them, but they, the early gollies have these wonderful noses and, and this is what I particularly try and find and collect. Um, so this one's got his nose here, which is more of a sort of bulbous mound on his face, but these two poorly looking people um, <laughs> you know, actually do have separate noses, but as you can see, they're a bit of a, a wreck. They're to be restored one day, but um, they've been chewed by something and their stuffing's coming out. But there's a, a man and a woman in their original clothes. So these date from about 1900 to 1910, they could be. That's And this isn't to be confused with little black sambo. That's not a golly, is it? No, he was a little black boy. Right. So a golly is, golly or golly walk is definitely a, is regarded as a, a, a character, you know, rather than a, rather than a human being. Um, so, you know, like we, as I said, like we would think as a, a garden gnome. They've um, got proper hair. Too. Yeah, well, this is this is normally rabbit skin, so that's yeah. probably something that's not very PC. So they have um, they often have rabbit skin hair, um, and then later on they had mohair, which is also quite non PC these days. I suppose it is. Yeah, yeah potentially. Because they groom it out of the, the, the deer. I don't Not know. The deer, I don't know. The I, don't, I don't know. So these examples are um, here and this one are uh, all English um, trolleys and they've all got a, a slight nose or a fully formed nose. And they're all, I would say these are all manufactured by a small company um, rather than, you know, the bigger well known companies. Um, and you know they've got rather nice original clothes but this one here is also about 1910 and and she's got a, a lovely big nose but this is I was quite amused by this but this is all completely original but, but it's a golly in normal clothes if I lift her skirt up as you can see but she's just been turned into a a female a lady, golly. lady golly by putting a, a lacy skirt on and a a bonnet, but she still actually squeaks. Oh, so she's still me. got a squeaker and she's in absolutely wonderful condition. So this is actually manufactured by a bigger German toy company and perhaps the most sought after um, golly is the Steiff golly and that's incredibly rare. Um, you know, they it was sold in quite large numbers but I've only seen about two or three of them in, yeah. in my many years. I'm looking desperately for one to buy if um, 
anyone actually had one. <laughs> There's anybody out there? <laughs> out there? No. Um, but so I, I, I was talking to a, 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 a fellow collector the other day about them. We wondered actually if the colour of the material, the dye involved in the material, is more susceptible to being eaten by moth. For yeah, instance. So I think blue, um, you know, whatever dyes the blue, for instance, that may be the reason they have a very low survival rate. But moths just, do love felt too, don't they? Yes, they're, they're very fond. So we have to be constantly aware of um, moths in this collecting world, don't we really? Yes. But I, this isn't moth damage. That's either just wear or maybe a little mouse at some so stages. So what's the stuffing? Well, it looks like, is it a sort of wood wool? Well, no, it's not wood wool. It's like um, a cotton mix. So it could be a sort of mixture of, um, I think um, it's what's, you know, the, the stuff that's made left over from the textile industry yeah, yeah. that's, you know, left on the, on the floor of when they've been weaving or what have you. And it's just... You know, sold as stuffing, I, I would say. So, but they're often stuffed with. As I think this one has been doing a bit of a leaking all over the table here because he's got bits of corking in him. So, the earliest English teddy bears were stuffed with cork. Right. So, that's a very early sign. You can feel it, it's a bit knobbly. Oh, in there yes, you can than, feel it, yeah. So, that's the earlier, sort of the early 1905 1910 teddy bears, if you can find one that early. From England, are stuffed with cork. Yeah, I think I've got a couple. Cork, and then so we have this chap who's one of my favourites. I love him because he's. Uh, I mean, the Golly had lots of adventures, and he travelled all over the world with his his wooden dolly friends. And and this is um, him as a cowboy, and I think he's a rather wonderful cowboy. I'm um, sadly his um, trousers are silk, so they've frayed, but he's manufactured as well. Um, not by anybody we know, though. No, not by... Um, you know, later on, it come the 1920s, then you start to see Chad Valley ones and Dean's ones and Mary Ford, etc. But this is the period that I find really interesting mm. and love, the early period. Got wonderful earrings. Somebody's coming there. Yes, no, exactly. And um, that's part of him, you know. That's, you know, you can see he's manufactured rather than homemade mm. you know because it's it's done in a sort of brief style of sewing you know it's done on a commercial level rather than you know if you made something like this at home it would be much finer at this time what's uh, what's the string on his hands i think that's his lasso yeah, of course it is he's a cowboy and he has i think this i thought he had a holster but no i'm wrong that must have been on a different toy but yeah, no, this is part of my golly collection. And, um, you know, it was really in the 1950s um, with, um, you know, immigration from the, the, the West Indies and so forth when children started to get, um, you know, black children started to get abused in the playground and called names like yes. golly. That's when the negative side came in. Um, and he's had a sort of bad rap mm. ever since. Um, but actually, a lot of um, black collectors, you know, collect gollies. Mm. And, you know, it's part of our history. And a lot of people's childhood, you know, he was a real popular childhood character. So it'd be a shame just to ignore him and forget about him. Lovely. They are lovely. <coughs> and very, very early, aren't they? Totally old. Well over 100 years, 110? They can be, yeah, some of them are, certainly. He's probably, I mean, he, yeah, but I think they're all, this one's slightly later, this is 1920s. I think, just. <coughs> Interesting. Thank you.